Hey guys, how are you doing? How you doing? Let me open up my Skype. Oh, my Skype is open. First last, do you have my Skype uh, identity? Skype identity? Guys, hopefully it won't it won't buffer. I don't know, it may buffer. So we're trusting by the grace of Jesus Christ, may the Father, the Lord Jesus, the Son, and Holy Spirit be glorified. Bless this session, strengthen me to bless you. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ and Father, bless the internet and keep us safe and protect us from this panic and watch over our loved ones, my children, in Jesus' name. Fill us, fill us. Amen, amen. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. My Skype name, do you guys have my Skype name or not? I'm open up for questions, right? Yep, Benny Malik. Thank you, guys. He just posted it. I was going to get it. Feel free to call me if you have questions. This is your night to ask me questions. We'll see how long we'll go. What did you guys think overall of the debate? I didn't think it was a debate at all. He was not ready. Right? Feel free to call me. You got my Skype number. Right? Yeah. Is the people on Discord listening? And that loudmouth George Lopez. What happened to Carlos, that coward? Did I call him out to debate me? What did he say? That's another guy I want to debate badly. Him, Dale Tuggy. Rational phobia. This past two hours, I was in a debate with a Unitarian. I didn't care. I wasn't angry with him. You know, I, I didn't care. He can say what he wants. I really don't care. I didn't have any hatred for him. I felt sorry for him, actually, because I, I didn't see him as being a malicious militant anti-trinitarian a trinitarian hater in the sense that he would blaspheme the word but carlos i don't like anthony rogers i don't like and dale tuggy i despise i'd like to get dale tuggy and destroy him right yeah discord yeah we're on discord oh anthony rogers i said i'm sorry anthony buzzard why would i say anthony rogers? anthony rogers is a theological beast he's our brother in jesus christ i made a mistake guys calm down anthony buzzard there are too many Anthony's in my book. Calm down. He's a brother in Jesus Christ. Anthony Rogers is a blessing to the church. But yeah, I was going to see fuse for a minute. Yeah. What did I say? I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. Anyway, folks, they're closing down more places. My friend just texts me. He goes, you're right. My company's closing down next week. He's, they're being forced to close down. So, And my, my brother in Christ sent me footage where he saw hundreds of of tanks flying down the highway in Illinois. It's happening, guys. Don't panic. Don't fear. Don't shame Jesus Christ. Be patient. Be calm. Be still. Jesus is alive. He's almighty. Okay? Jesus is alive. He's almighty. He'll take care of us. He loves us, and we love him. So don't be, don't, yep, because they're bringing in the military in case there are riots. Okay? So don't worry about it. Yeah, don't, folks, Jesus is alive. He's real. This is now where we're going to see how good our Lord is and we need to trust him. Yep, it's happening, Alex. But to be prayer, I told you it was happening. Didn't I tell you that two weeks ago? This is what they're setting up for. But it's, but if you panic, shame on you. You serve Jesus who's alive. He's real. He's almighty. He will watch over us. Yeah, man, you think I, I'm excited, man. I'm high, man. That's, that's even better for us. We stay home. Government does what it does. We'll be worshiping Jesus, praying, fasting, and serving the Lord and doing more videos and more articles. Guys, if you guys want to call, uh, I opened it up for your questions on any topic, especially on the Trinity or what you heard. That's why I opened up or I would have just went to sleep because it's uh, 9 o'clock my time, which is 1 a.m. New York time. And thank our brother for last. He's up. It's 1 a.m. for him too. Yep, if you want to talk about the debate, if you have questions about it, because in all honesty, oh, yeah, it's 12.20 a.m. Your time? Why am I getting the time? Yeah, man. You're three hours ahead, so 9 and 3, that's 12. What's wrong with me, man? You guys with your time zones, you all stink. Stenson, I want you to do yourself a favor. I want you to read the book of First John. But I'm going to tell you something that I usually don't, don't suggest. Read it in IV, New International Version, First John. It's only five chapters. Read it. When you're done reading it, get back to me, and I'll answer that question thoroughly. Yep, I know, Scott. Well, then they're all shutting down. 
Arizona doesn't have as bad an outbreak, but it's going to shut down. That's just life, man. Don't panic. Just glorify Jesus Christ and love Jesus Christ. Yes, okay, ESV, yes, Stenson, read it. You can read ESV. Just read ESV. Read it in five chapters. When you're done, we'll talk about it. But that, that answers your question. I know 1611, my buddy, he hauls cars. He works for a truck. I think he hauls cars. And he said his boss in California didn't want to shut down, but they're forcing to. He wanted to keep going, but they forced him, saying, no, you got to shut down. He was forced because he didn't want to put people out, off of work. But, folks, this is when you're going to know your faith is real and you whether you really believe in Jesus, King Jesus. No questions, guys? If you're tired, man, I'll just shut down. So what happened to Carlos uh, first last? You didn't tell me if he accepted my debate challenge. What about Hosea? You're asking me something general. What about Hosea? Something general. He did, huh? Well, you told him, right? You called him out saying, hey, Carlos, why don't you accept Sam's debate challenge? Okay. And also he disappeared. He got scared. Okay. Ian, what's going to happen is whatever's going to happen. If you're freaking out, ask Jesus to save you because what? Throw you in jail? All right. Kill you? All right. What's going to happen? There's nothing you can do about it. So you can panic and grieve the Holy Spirit, or you can trust Jesus Christ in spite of it. Can you explain where the Bible lies? Okay, pray. Yeah, I can answer that very easy. I mean, you, Marco, you have a biblical right to defend yourself. You don't have a right to murder people. You don't have a right to kill people who refuse to accept the gospel, but you have a biblical right to bear arms and protect your life and the life of your children and the life of those who are weak. That is your duty in Scripture. Right? Louisa, did you hear that debate? Louisa? Folks, if there's no questions, I'll shut up because I'm too tired to open up a subject. I'll have to do it tomorrow. Right? It's very late for some people. All right. Even if it fell against me. Amen, Amelia. Yes, Tony, Naomi, let me answer that question for you. The Bible does say the idols, the gods, and goddesses of the nations are demons. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 19 and 21. But I want you to pay attention, right? 1 Corinthians 10, 19 and 21. Let's read, let's see what it says. I don't know. It was never you. That's beyond my control. Let's read, Tony. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice, titles is anything. What say I then? Idol anything? But I say that the things which Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. I say that the things which a Gentile sacrifice, first last, why are you posting verses twice? You just posted the 19 twice and then 20 twice. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I will not that you, you, you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Okay, Protestant wants to post. Go ahead, brother. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't see him here. I got confused. Okay, Tony, did you get it? The worship of the pagans, the Greeks and the Romans, their sacrifices are to demons. Are to demons. Their sacrifice are to demons. So though Zeus is not a real god, Hermes is not a real god, Diana is not a real god, right? There are demons behind them that appear as if these gods exist. So don't be surprised. Zeus showed up. He would show up to a Athenian. So these stories of Zeus showing up, don't think they're necessarily fake or fictional. Because someone say, ah, see, you believe the Bible stories, but these other stories are fake and fictional. No, I believe a demon appeared as Zeus. I believe the demon appeared as Diana Artemis. Demons can appear as the gods and goddesses of the nations to mislead them into worshiping them. Because in my worldview, the Bible says the spirit realm is real. There are actual spirit beings, fallen beings, evil spirits, demons, Satan, that will appear as gods and goddesses in order to keep you away from the true God and keep worshiping them. 
So though Zeus doesn't exist, the demon that manifests as Zeus exists, whether it's a demon or Satan. Yeah, exactly, like Allah. Thank you. You with me there? Is everyone clear? Yes. The gods and goddesses of all the nations, they are not simply non-existent deities. They're demons. Now, Tony, I showed you the context of Paul and the Corinthians, right? He's talking to the Corinthians, and they would worship Zeus, and they would worship Hermes, and right? But Paul is quoting the Hebrew scriptures. He's quoting Deuteronomy 32, where God condemns the Israelites for sacrificing to demons. Let me show you. He's quoting Deuteronomy 32. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, 16 and 17. Good question. Say this one I want. Ask me questions, folks. Come on. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, 16, 17. Context of the Exodus, Tony. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked them, uh, provoke they him to anger. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers fear not. Well, the gods and goddesses that the Israelites were worshiping at that time were the gods and goddesses of Egypt and the gods and goddesses of Canaan. And the Canaanites worshiped Eel and his son Baal, Baal. So here it's saying when they worship them and sacrifice to them, they were actually worshiping, sacrificing to devils, to demons, not to the true God. So do you see the common denominator between them? What's the common denominator, Tony, with them? These pagans may, may have worshipped different pantheons of gods and goddesses, but what they had in common, what they had in common was they're still all demons and Satan appearing as the gods and goddesses of a particular people to deceive them into worshiping them instead of Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahovah. And guys, notice I kept saying Yahweh. The reason why I said Yahweh is because that's how most Christians and these Unitarians pronounce the divine name, Yahweh. So I don't want to get into an argument with that. What's up, Alan? You just missed, missed my two-hour debate with a Unitarian heretic on the absolute essential deity of Jesus Christ, that he's Yahweh in the flesh. But it's now on the YouTube channel. Good to see you. Overall, how would you rate the debate? I mean, again, it doesn't matter. On all honesty, I liked Andrew, and I didn't want to humiliate him. I wanted to win him to Christ. Send him the link, folks. And yet notice that you know, all right, praise Jesus. We got a call. Thank you, man. Hold on. What's up, Paul? Is this Paul Williams, my boy? My Benoit? What's up, Paul Williams? Is that Paul Williams? Um, no, my name is Paul McCartney. Hey, um, hi, did Sam. You, before you do that, did you did you like sing with the Beatles? <laughs> no, but I keep getting asked that. All right. Now, before you go any further, guys, you can hear him, right? You can hear Paul. Just want to make sure before I answer a question, you guys can't hear. Okay, can you hear? Hello, hello. Yes. Test, okay. okay. One, no, two. not you guys. Them. Okay. Yeah, they hear you, brother. Go ahead. In Jesus' name, I'll try to answer. Thank you for your call. Call, folks. Don't worry. I'm in a good mood today. I won't hurt you too bad. What's up, my brother? <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, first of all, love what you're doing. Um, Praise God. Pray for you, man. Thank um, you, man. God bless you. Andrew kept appealing to um, Philo yeah. when he was uh, making his defense, yeah. and he kept saying intertestamental yes, literature. Did. Yes. Um, I guess my question is, I'm pretty confident when, when it comes to the Bible making a defense from it. What should I know about intertestamental yeah. literature to refute um, what Andrew is saying? Yes, excellent. Now, what I want you to do, I'm going to be posting links in the comments section. I prepared material for the debate. And in those articles, I have links to some of my other discussions, right? I already had anticipated his appeal to Philo. Philo, okay, just to give you a little background. Guys, here are the links. Save these links, okay? I'm going to give you several articles. Download them. Study them, use them, right? Even upload them to your website as long as you keep the URL and the name and the author and don't sell them. Use them because I produce it for you guys for your benefit. Let me just send the links and you can look in the comment section and get the links as well. Now, what he's appealing to, there are sources written right before the New Testament and after what we would consider the closing of the Old Testament canon. The intertestamental inter Jewish literature would also include what we would call the Apocrypha, 
what the Catholics call deuterocanonicals. You know those extra books in the Catholic Bible? Now, Catholics don't Absolutely. think they're extra books. So I'm speaking as a Protestant. A Roman Catholic and the Orthodox believe those are canonical scriptures. But those would be intertestamental literature, the wisdom of Solomon, right? The wisdom of Sirach, Ben Sirach, first and second Maccabees, even third Maccabees, Tobit. So Enoch, exactly. Someone mentioned Alex. That we found the Book of Watchers in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So it's talking about the books written right after what Protestants believe was the closing of the Old Testament canon. The last Old Testament prophet that wrote was Malachi. And during that 400-year gap, the Jews were writing documents. And these documents give us a window into how the Jews interpreted the Old Testament and their daily practices. Now, the problem with appealing to such literature these sources are not uniform. They don't all agree because it's written by different Jews with different Jewish perspectives. It's like today, if you go to a Christian book bookstore, Paul, you're going to see books by charismatics. You're going to see books by secessionists. You're going to see books by amillennialists or uh, post-millennialists. Or... So it's going to be all over the place, right? You're going to find yes. sources. Okay. Same thing with the time of Jesus. All the Jews did not agree. They understood the Old Testament differently and sometimes in contradictory fashions. Even in the New Testament, you see that, Paul. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Rhodians, the Sadducees denied the resurrection, denied yeah. a disembodied spiritual existence that people die and they continue to exist apart from the body as disembodied spirits, spirits without bodies, and they only held to the five books of Moses. So this is the problem with appealing to this literature. The literature cannot be a sure guy in interpreting the Old Testament. It can't be because it's not uniform. And then there are statements that contradict the Old Testament. So you'd start with the Apocrypha and you work your way there. But with that said, the sources he quoted actually backfired against him. Philo was an Alexandrian Jew. He was trying to communicate the truth of Judaism to Greek people using Greek philosophy, Greek thought. So Philo spoke of the logos lagos he spoke of the lagos are you with me there yes and he didn't believe the logos the lagos was simply a rational principle this is where andrew was confusing things because the stoics the greek stoics believed the logos was the rational principle that made the universe cohere right because it was the logic behind the universe so to them it was a rational principle but notice again what he did he, he talked about Philo's Logos or Lagos, but then he defined Philo's Lagos as a rational principle, which comes from Greek Stoics, not from Philo. See what he was doing? Yeah. Okay, let me repeat what I mean. The Stoics believe the Logos was simply the rational principle, what gave universe its meaning, its coherence, its, its rationality. The logic you're using comes from the Logos. Even the word logic comes from Logos. Okay. They didn't see it as a person, but Philo did see it as a person. So he was misappropriating Philo because Philo gives you an idea that there were even Jews who were not Christians because Philo was a contemporary of Jesus. Jews were not Christians who from their reading of the Old Testament could see there was a divine figure, a divine agent, a divine person distinct from Yahweh called the Logos in Greek in Aramaic called Memra. Memra in Aramaic, who would be sent by God, who would speak as if he's God and be worshipped as God. So Philo actually supports us, not the Unitarians. Mm. This is why it was ironic. And this is in my article. I just posted the links to two articles. And then we'll put a description box. Let me put it again. Here's one. Judaism's views on the Messiah's pre existence. Because Unitarians would say the Jews didn't think that the Messiah existed before his human tabernacling. That's not true. In this article, I just posted it again. You'll find Jewish sources before and after the time of Christ speaking of the pre-human existence of Messiah. That Messiah existed as a person, a conscious, cognizant person before he enters the world as a man. And they even ascribe to him divinity. So that's the article I put in the comment section in the YouTube video. And then here's the one on... Philo's view of the Logos, Logos as a divine person. So it's ironic he quoted Philo, and yet in my papers for the debate, I quote Philo. I appeal to Philo. 
This is why do you think I, I asked him the question? He didn't answer. I go, okay, can you show me where Philo says the word is not a person? This is why when he quoted Philo, I'm saying, this guy serious? That's what I said to myself. <laughs> this guy can't be serious, is he? Philo's he proved for the Trinity that the Jews, apart from the New Testament, knew of a divine person distinct from God called the Logos, the word. In other words, what you have in John 1, uh oh, David, what's calling me? Hold on. What happened, David? You calling me and I'm alive? Skype? What happened, David? You calling me and I'm alive? Skype? Hey. What? They're listening to you. They can hear you. So, what up? They're listening to you. They can hear you. Can you mute me over there? What's going on? Go ahead. Hey, could you uh, shut your channel down, please? <laughs> <laughs> Is that all you calling me for, man? Shut your channel down, dude. Okay, I will. Well, everything's shutting down. The, the uh, coronavirus is shutting us, so we're now locked in our homes. Now, you can send me some money from all that money your you channel, make. Your channel is coronavirus. All right. Appreciate oh, it, bro. Gosh. Anyway, listen, bro. I won't be locked in here, and I don't make the kind of money you make. Send me at least the five Gs to make it for five months, all right? Because I need five Gs. They're 1,000 every month, hater. All right? Now, I'm going to have to let you go, the great white hope, because there's I'll someone else listening. Streams better, and then uh, more people will support you. Well, that's where you come in. Send me a tech guy. But anyway, I'm talking to Paul McCartney, part of the Beatles. So let me finish my answer to him, all right? I'm going to sleep because uh, your show already put me to sleep. Man, your face is cured to insomnia, all right? All right. All right, buddy. Go listen to my debate with the Unitarian. Maybe you'll learn theology. Ambien Shamoon. <laughs> Thank you so much. But go listen to my debate with the Unitarian that I did right now. You'll learn something about theology. So, hater. Okay. Bye bye, Hater Wood. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that next time I need to go to sleep. All right, catch you later. All right, bye bye. Bye bye. Hey guys, that's what happens when you open up your uh, your Skype. You're gonna have Hater Wood calling and hating. So, Paul, I don't know where I was because this guy just threw me off. I was. Oh yeah, I said the thing about John. Let me just share something about John. John's Gospel. If a Jew read John one, verses one to thirteen, he would amen John. He'd say, "Amen, John. We know about the logos." Where they would be shocked is verse 14. The word became flesh. That's where they would take notice. They would say, wait, wait. Okay, John, we are, we're aware of the logos. We know there's a divine person distinct from God, one with him, subject to his authority, who is sent by God, who is God to us, right? That we know in the agent of creation. But when you say he became flesh, what in the world are you talking about? And who is that enfleshment of the logos? Who is the incarnate logos, and he says, Jesus of Nazareth. That's where they would be shocked. But up until verse 13, they'd amen you. Amen, amen, amen. 14, hey, not so fast. Who is this enfleshment of the logos, the logos and sarks in the flesh? Who, who you Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. See, that would have been shocking. So peruse my articles. Also go to answeringislam.net, answeringislam.net. AnsweringMuslims.com and search for Anthony Rogers. He's a beast. He's a theological beast. He was listening to my live stream. He has extensive articles, as I do, quoting the Targums, the Aramaic paraphrases of the Old Testament done by Jews, quoting Philo, quoting the Apocrypha to prove that there was a segment of Judaism that believed there was more than one divine person, one div more than one divine power in heaven, showing that even the Jews from their reading of the Old Testament saw that God was multi-personal. So look, at, look up his stuff, and he's also on David Wood's channel, Acts 17 Apologetics, and he's done a series on this. Anthony Rogers, myself, also Michael Heiser, Mike Heiser, M-I-K-E Heiser, H-E-I-S-E-R. He's on YouTube, and he's a leading evangelical voice on the two Yahwehs of the Old Testament. And he goes into intertestamental literature. He's got books on it, right? And Michael Brown, a Jewish believer in Jesus, Michael Brown answering Jewish objections to, objections to Jesus. Is that clear? Yes. Now, if you have a follow-up question, ask me. Um, I do not. Thank okay, you. Make sure you send me a like a, a autographed CD. All right, bro? <laughs> if not, I'll be upset. Okay. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Take care. God bless. Bye. Come on, guys. Any questions? Let's. Any more questions? Here's some more articles. I'm hyped, man. I can't sleep right now. I'm too full of energy. Okay, so give them the name again. 
No more questions? Even in the text. You can ask me questions in the text. Save that article. Here are the articles that I produced for the, the, today's discussion. Yeah, you know, to answer the question again, I actually like Andrew. He wasn't one of these militant anti-Trinitarians who is blasphemous. So I pray God will bring him to saving faith in Jesus. I really do. I actually like them. Right? Did I give you the Jewish sources on the word as a divine person? Here it goes. Here, let me give you this one. Jewish sources on the word as a divine person. Anthony Buzzsaw, Buzzard, I don't like. And Dale Tuggy, I despise. Right? I think he's a wicked blasphemer. And I would do anything I can to debate him in order to silence him and muzzle him because he's wicked. He's nasty. He thinks he's intelligent. He's not. I'm sorry. I got to be up front. Right? All right. How do you know he's horrified of me? I called him out to debate, but he's I'm not professional enough to, you know, professional enough to debate. Okay, guys, those are the articles. Any questions? Going once, going twice. Oh, you did see the comments by Dale Tuggy? Sorry, did you see my debate right now? Uh, sorry, Christian. I think it's better if you if you read my article or rewatch those sessions. Hold on, someone just sent me. Arpit Dix. Dix, D I X. Go ahead, Arpit. You want to call me? Go ahead. Do you want to? You have a question? Yes. If you have a question, call me. And why are you asking? Armpit DX, Dix. Yeah. His PhD is actually less clean than toilet paper. Psst, psst. Hey. Psst. Hold on. Ho. Oh. Hey. Psst. It's your birthday. Go, Sammy. Go, Sammy. What's up, Armpit? I keep calling you Armpit. Your armpit smell? <laughs> no, brother. Yeah. Uh, hello, before, brother. Yeah, before you ask me a question, before you ask me a question, guys, send Sahi Christian the link. I just finished a two-hour debate with a Unitarian on Jesus being God. Sahi, where are you, man? All right, go ahead, brother. What's your question? Uh, brother. Yeah. Uh, brother, uh, if you remember, once I told you that uh, I'm an ex-Hindu and a former Jehovah's Witness who's now a born-again Christian. Wow. And I what a journey. My, my, I, and I and I shared my testimony with you once, if you remember. It, it was almost two two years back when mm -hmm. I was invited to Brother Osama Dagdog's radio show, Revealing the Truth About Islam. Wow. What's this place, man? Actually. God, you were saying, yeah. Uh, sorry? No, good. I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm listening. I was just saying, man, what's this place? Go ahead. That's amazing testimony. Yeah. Uh, you know, after accepting Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and after leaving my own religion of Hinduism, I came into contact with some Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, eventually, Lord brought me through a very, a very terrible and very horrible experience. I must say, I met the jihadi twice. Yeah, in my own city, I met a jihadi terrorist with whom I was going to debate, and that guy with whom I was going to debate, he was responsible for killing 65 people wow, man. in serial bomb blast in my city. Wow, that's terrible, man. So what happened? And uh, three years, um, sorry. What happened? Go ahead, brother. Get them you know saying what happened. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, two years after leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses cult, uh, even I had the same experience with Muslims. I was invited to a Muslim wedding where I met some former Muslim students who were studying in my city. They were the students of pharmaceuticals from a college called NIMS University in my uh, in my city, Jaipur. So at that night, I, I actually met four Muslim students, uh, for, uh, former Muslims. One was Arab and three were Nigerians. Those three Nigerian guys were associated with Boko Haram, wow. with whom I met. What is up with you, these connections with terrorists, man? Why? Goodness. God, Jesus, God, Jesus Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Spirit miraculously protect you to glorify Jesus Christ. But go ahead, brother. It's amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even uh, I forgot to mention, uh, I was targeted by a few other radical jihadists. You have, you know, uh, what that guy's name is. Uh, once you had a debate with a, um, you know, the that Wahhabi preacher from Pakistan, Mumtaz, his name is Mumtaz. Inamullah Mumtaz. Mumtaz, right? Inamullah Mumtaz, yes, yeah. yes, that guy. The guy was a joke, yeah. Nowadays, he's, yeah, he actually, you know, targeted me for the debate so that you can, he, he can use my anger and 
the so-called blasphemous statement against, uh, against his prophet, against the Christian minority of Pakistan. Thank God you didn't fall for it. Did you, did you fall for it? No, brother. I actually, when he contacted me for the debate, I first, you know, uh, asked my the my congregation elders. So they said to me that, you know, we can never get anything out of all these debates. I mean, if they you just go for gospel preaching, if they want to accept it, they will accept it or otherwise just leave it. Yeah. Don't get into all these debates. And this is what they said to me. Mm. Good advice, because right now, if you're young and you're hot blooded and passionate for Jesus, you're in a country that's dangerous, not because you're afraid. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, we're well, not so because you're afraid, you know, Jesus is with you, but because you don't want to bring harm to other people as well, because they're not just going to target you, but your family as well. <clears throat> so be wise as a serpent, innocent yes. as a dove. Preach Jesus, preach the love of Jesus, preach the cross of Jesus, preach the Bible's truth. But in your circumstance in a Muslim country, don't attack Muhammad. Because then they're going to use the blasphemy law. So you can preach Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Don't say Muhammad is a false prophet. Or say, hey, Jesus, Son of God, our Lord and Savior. Answer their objections and just focus on glorifying Jesus Christ. Say nothing about their prophet. Nothing. Not Nothing yeah, good or bad. Don't say anything good, but don't say anything bad. And be wise. So if someone says, yes, so is Muhammad a true prophet? So I'll say, well, my friend, my Bible says Jesus, Son of God. He's my Lord and Savior. He died on the cross and rose again. If anyone contradicts the message, the message of Jesus, I can't accept them. So you tell me, you know. So be wise yeah. even how you answer that question. Yeah, and brother, my English is not that much good. Hope you can understand what I'm saying. I understand very well because you are very handsome, brother, from different Thank numbers. you so much, brother. So yeah, you, and uh, I was asking you about the, you know, uh, as I mentioned that I was in Jehovah's Witnesses cult for almost three years. Yes, sir, right. Too long. So, uh, I have a question regarding, you know, their Bible translation, the, uh, yes, the, the, the New World Translation. Excellent. What's the question? Yeah. Feel free. Yeah. Uh, just a few minutes back, you mentioned the word Jehovah and Yahweh. Yeah. So, wow, in Amanda the Zuri. Jehovah's Witness. Before you go, brother, Amanda Zori, Danny Zia is my brother. I love him from my heart with a passion. He's a soldier of Jesus Christ, a warrior of Jesus Christ. I need to call him, see how he's doing. Amanda Zori, contact me on Facebook. If you can find me, my name is Sam Shimon on Facebook and Ben Malik, two names, because I want to stay in contact with you. So, sorry, brother. I just wanted to, this sister, this brother is one of my heroes. I love him. A great man of God. No problem, brother. Now, Amanda no problem, Zori, brother. you must be the niece of his wife, right? So you're on the Tiari side. And brother, don't think, I'm sorry, sorry, because I... I haven't heard from Danny Z in a while. He's a soldier. May God bless him, his wife and daughters. So it's his wife that's your aunt, right? Sorry, brother. And we're going to talk about Joe's witnesses. This is what happens when it's live, brother. Don't be upset. Exactly. Okay, I knew okay. it. Okay. All right. Give him my, my loves and kisses because I can't visit you there. We're quarantined. Make sure if you do kiss him that you wash your hands and don't touch your face. No, no coronavirus. But go ahead, brother. Tell us about the Joe Witness. What's your question? Yeah. Uh, I was actually wanted to ask you about the word Jehovah in Yahweh. As you know that in the New World Translation, yes. in the New Testament of Jehovah's Witnesses, yes. they have, they have uh, you know, placed the word Jehovah in place of God and Lord. Yes. You mean in the New Testament, right? Yeah. Specifically. In the New Testament, yes. Yes, 237 times they insert, inserted the word Jehovah in the New Testament translation 237 times. So guys, understand what he's asking me. In the English translation of the New Testament of the Jehovah's Witness Bible, they inserted the word Jehovah 237 times. So that's part of the question. So go ahead, brother. Yeah, my question is not yet completed. My question was actually uh, in Jehovah's Witnesses literature. Yes. Uh, I've read some. Uh, I've read somewhere that the no one really knows the proper and uh, clear, yes. you know, pronunciation of the word Yahweh. Yeah, that's so outdated information. At that time, when, when my yeah, when my Bible study was conducted with Jehovah's Witnesses, I asked them about the proper pronunciation of this word because I have read this in their own uh, articles that you know at that time. Uh, I just messed up with the question. Yeah, uh, you were reading so, articles that uh, no one knows the correct pronunciation of the name. 
And so it's pure, purely guesswork. So what about it, though? Yeah. So I was asking you that if no one really knows the proper and real, yes. uh, real pronunciation yes. of the word Yahweh or Jehovah, mm -hmm. so how Jehovah's Witnesses can put that word in place of God and Lord in which, you know, even when yeah. the verse, uh, the context of the verse is talking about Jesus. Yeah. Well, How they can place that word Jehovah on that place. Okay. That's my question. Okay, let me answer the question. It, Jehovah's Witnesses are basing this information that is common among scholars who say that the exact pronunciation of the divine name was lost early on. And so what people do is they insert the vowels, which were added later, the vowels of Adonai and Elohim into the word to get Yahovah, right? But now you have a scholar who's not a Christian. His name is Nehemiah Gordon. Nehemiah Gordon, Nehemiah Gordon. You'll find him on YouTube. He's written books. He actually demonstrates from medieval Hebrew manuscripts, manuscripts produced by Jews in Hebrew, that it's not true that they forgot the pronunciation of the name. The rabbis have always known the name, but they kept it hidden from outsiders, but those who trained with rabbis, especially to become rabbis, they knew the meaning of the name, and he actually shows, he cites, and he shows you the documents and what the rabbis say, and they pronounce the name as Yahovah, Yahovah. So if we go with his research, and there's no reason to question it, the Jews have always known the proper way to pronounce the name, specifically the rabbis, but they kept it hidden from outsiders, only to the initiates, initiates, and it's in their writings, and he quotes them, and he shows you. If you watch him on YouTube, and so if it's Yahovah, then that means Jehovah is actually the correct English way of saying the divine name. It's the correct English way, more so than Yahweh, right? More so. So that's number one. That's why I have no problem saying Jehovah or Yaho Yahovah, because that's actually based on his re research, and I haven't seen anyone to refute him or any contrary evidence, because I haven't found any contrary evidence, I'm now convinced it's Yahovah, Jehovah. But now with that said, by the way, brother, you got to put down your, your volume because I either hear a train about to smash into your house because I keep hearing, <laughs> choo -choo, choo -choo, choo -choo. they're coming after you. No brother. no, brother, actually, it's some construction work is going on. And, uh, you know, a few days back, I had a very serious accident. Uh, just, uh, you know, a bag full of cemented blocks actually just fall just a few inches away from my head. It, it didn't was, hit your head? Maybe if you it know, hit your head, it would have knocked some sense into you. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Well, brother, if that's... You have, okay. I'm going to answer. If this is your only question, maybe you can hear my response offline, meaning you can unless you have another question. I'll answer it. You can listen because the background noise is distracting me. So do you have another question with this or that was your only question? No, brother. That, uh, I think I've, uh, that's okay for, for now. I okay. Think, because, you know, I, I had so many questions, but right now I... Don't be nervous. Don't write them down. To, you know. Write them down. God willing, in the future I'll answer. But I'm going to finish the answer to your question. But if you can do it, just hang up. It will be a little easier. Because that way I won't hear the background noise. But let me finish why they insert in places where Jesus is identified as Yehovah. Let me answer that one. But God bless you, brother. Right, brother. Protect sure. you. Pray sure. for us. That God keep us holy in love with Jesus. And let me finish the answer. Yeah. Take care, brother. Thank you, brother. Sure. Okay. Now let me answer the second part of the question. For those of you who are not familiar with the Jehovah Witness Bible, in the English translation of the Jehovah Witness Bible, the English translation, which you can read online for free. I don't know if Protestant has the link or first to last. Right. Post it for us. Right. And I'll give you an example of where they inserted the word Jehovah in their English translation 237 times. And this is something all Christians need to know, because in inserting the word Jehovah in the New Testament, they're indirectly saying the Bible's corrupt. That it hasn't been completely, perfectly preserved. So first last just quoted or gave you the link to their Bible. Let me show you where they insert the word Jehovah. In their Bibles without any warrant. Revelation 1.8. Let me show you that. Are you with me or am I putting you to sleep? I have sessions on this, by the way. If you go to my YouTube channel, hit the like button, guys. I don't say it enough. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Get others to subscribe and watch these sessions. You'll benefit from that. 
And again, before I read this passage from the Jehovah's Witness Bible, you guys got another example that the arguments we give you, the arguments that David Wood gives you, which he stole from me, but that's another point. The arguments that Anthony Rogers gives you, the arguments I give you are battle-tested arguments, arguments we've used in spiritual battle success, successfully by the power of the Chaim God, by the power of Jesus Christ. You saw today the arguments I used left that man confused and baffled. He didn't know how to respond. So we're not giving you textbook arguments that only work in academia in a class setting. We're giving you actual arguments that work in the street by the power of the Holy Spirit to get people to repent and accept the true God and not simply win a debate. Are you with me there? So that should build your confidence. Number one, the Bible is God's word. Number two, the God of the Bible is real. And he is the triune God, Father, Son, Spirit, and Jesus is the God, man. And number three, number three, these arguments have been tested in battle, refined by the Spirit, and are irrefutable, mighty to destroy strongholds for the glory of Jesus. Okay? So now that said, Revelation 1, verse 8. Stenson, I finished it. Okay, yeah. We'll talk about it during the wing, Stenson. But you read it now and you see what it says. Revelation 1.8. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible. Read here, guys, and don't get distracted by side discussions. Yes, Rel, it was the truth. Why would God lie to him? Is there God lying to him? Offer up your son. But God already has, has a plan that the things that God says, he does not revoke and he's not lying. But God has already included substitutionary atonement. So that his word is not falsified, so he doesn't come out being portrayed as a deceiver like you're trying to portray him as such. Now, Revelation 1.8, guys, read for me. Forgive him. Forget about Hosea. Go find you a prostitute and marry her. What is your fascination with Hosea marrying a prostitute? Why are you losing sleep over this? Go get marry one and follow his example. My goodness. Please tell me, why is he marrying a prostitute? Why? Prostitutes can't be saved and forgiven and restored? And be loved and be brought in as a housewife. They don't have no value. Can you tell me why you marry a prostitute? I'm nervous here. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? For the past 20 minutes. Well, can you tell me why you married a prostitute? Why not? Prostitutes are humans, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, created in the image of God. What's wrong with you? You're freaking out. Why marry a prostitute? Eh? All right, Revelation 1 8. Let's read it. Relation 1 verse 8. By the way, Cloudy, I'll give you a million bucks if you show me where it says Mary Magdalene used to be a prostitute. Cloudy, I'll give you a million. Show me in the Bible where it says Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. Okay, Cloudy? Okay, Revelation 1 8, the Joe's Witness Bible. Armpit. Sorry, I don't mean to call you armpit, but I can't call you uh, pronounce your name, so I call it armpit. And your armpits don't smell because you use de deodorant. Revelation 1 8, the Joe's Witness Bible. Revelation 1, verse 8, the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Okay? Notice again. I am Alpha and Omega, says Jehovah God, the one who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. Okay, notice they inserted the word Jehovah. If you go to their website, they have what's called the Greek interlinear of the New Testament, their own Greek text that they publish and they use to translate. You're going to see the word Jehovah is not there. You know what the word is in the Greek of Revelation 1, 8? It's kurias. I am Alpha and Omega says uh, kurias, right? The Lord, not Jehovah. The word Jehovah is not in the Greek of Revelation. Are you with me there? You guys following me? The word Jehovah is not in Revelation. The word Jehovah is never used in the New Testament. It does not appear. If you're not getting this, let me know because I don't want to confuse you. If you're getting it, so the first question you need to ask is, why then did they insert the word Jehovah? They did that deliberately to indoctrinate Joe's witnesses from ever seeing Jesus being identified as Jehovah. They inserted the word Jehovah in the New Testament to separate Jesus from Jehovah, lest people think Jesus is Jehovah. For example, Revelation 1.8, if you're a Jehovah witness, Revelation 1 verse 8, if you're a Jehovah witness and you read it and it says Jehovah, then you're going to say this is God the Father. Because in Jehovah witness theology, 
God the Father alone is Jehovah. Jehovah is God the Father and no one else. So in their Bible, if you're a Jehovah Witness and you read, I am the Alpha and Omega, says Jehovah God, right away you're going to say that's the Father. It can't be the Son. You see what they did? You see the diabolical, satanic nature of this translation? Inserting words in a translation without any warrant to do so? Because the manuscripts of the New Testament that are in Greek do not ever use the word Jehovah. Doesn't appear in any Greek copy of the books of the New Testament. But what they did was they inserted it so that if you're a Jehovah Witness and you trust their Bible and you trust this organization, oh, that's the Father. See, it says Jehovah God. That's the Father. And you say, it's Jesus. Say, no, it's not Jesus. It's the Father. But now let me show you what happens if you don't put the word Jehovah in and you read it in a translation that fairly, accurately, and reverently translate the original Greek. Now let's look Revelation 1, verse 8. Revelation 1, verse 8, in a translation other than the Jehovah Witness. Oh, this guy, Gary. Okay, notice this. I am the Alpha and Omega, says Jehovah God, which is not the, the other translation. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was, which is to come the Almighty. Do me a favor, Protestant believer, post ESV or NIV, because they follow the same Greek, basically virtually the same Greek text. Because the Texas Receptus and the majority text read slightly different. How are you doing, Renee? You're always late, Renee. Renee, Renee. Someone's in love with you, Renee. Ren okay. ESV, Revelation 1 8. I'm the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and was, who is to come, the Almighty. Did you catch it? I'm the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, who is, who is to come, the Almighty. Here you're gonna you can make a strong case. That's Jesus speaking. If you guys are listening. And I'm not losing you. I'm not confusing you. You can make a strong case. That's Jesus speaking. How? Let's look at Revelation 1.8 one more time. And let me know that you're following me, folks. Okay. Truth will set you free. Do you want to be in bondage? There is no word Yahweh in Revelation 1.8. The Greek does not say Yahweh. We just gave you the Greek. Are you arguing in order for you to be exposed? What are you saying? There's the Greek right in front of your eyes. And I'll post the Greek one more time. Post the Greek one more time so I can read it for my friend in the Erasmian way. So don't condemn me, Anna. Ego emi to alpha ke to omega arche ke telos lege a curias curius curius ha on ke ho en ke erhomenas ho pantocrator. Where is the word Yahweh in the Greek? Ego emi to alpha ke to omega lege kerius kerius o teus o on ke o en ke o erchomenos erchomenos o pantocrator. Kerius, kerius, curios. Okay. Now, for Luis and everyone else who's paying attention, the word Jehovah does not appear in the Greek. They added it in the English. But now let's read Revelation 1 8 one more time, and then we'll show you how the context actually shows it's Jesus Christ. Okay. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and was, who is to come, the Almighty. Luis and everyone else, pay attention that the one speaking says, He is coming, who is and was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Now let's read verses 7 to 8, Revelation 1 7 to 8 together. By the way, Lisa, you didn't tell me. Maybe you did, and I didn't see it. Did you listen to the debate? Revelation 1, 7 to 8. Now read. Everyone read, please. Luis, everyone read. Look at the context, who the one is that's speaking. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Even those who pierced him will see him. The one coming is the one coming with the clouds who was pierced. The one who was pierced is the one coming with the clouds. And then verse 8, the one coming with the clouds who was pierced, starts speaking. I'm the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was, who is to come, the Almighty. In the context, it's Jesus Christ saying he is Alpha and Omega, the Almighty. Let's look at Revelation 1, 7 to 8 one more time and follow with me and pay attention. Guys, read it. Luis will read it. 
Okay, one more time. And thank our mods for helping me to help you. Revelation 1, 7 to 8. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. So the one coming is the one who comes on the clouds. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. The one who's coming with the clouds is the one who was pierced, pierced on a cross. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him, even so, amen. I'm the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was, who is to come, the Almighty. Okay, folks. Verse 7 says, pay attention. Verse 7 says, the one who's coming with the clouds is the one who was pierced. The Father wasn't pierced. The Holy Spirit wasn't pierced. The one coming with the clouds whom every eye will see is the one that was pierced. That's Jesus. But then in verse 8, the speaker says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, who is coming, the Almighty. But wait, verse one, 7 says, the one who's coming with the clouds is the one who's pierced. That's Jesus. So the one who then says in verse 8, I am coming, that's Jesus. But then Jesus says there, I'm Alpha and Omega, the Almighty. So Jesus claims to be the Almighty, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, the Almighty. Now, do you see why the Jehovah's Witnesses added the word Jehovah in Revelation 1 8? Is it making sense now why they added the word Jehovah? They added the word Jehovah in Revelation 1 8 so that the Jehovah's Witnesses would not connect verse 8 with verse 7. So they wouldn't identify Jesus as the Almighty. You see what they did? But you see what they did? So now you see why the Jehovah's Witnesses inserted the word Jehovah in the English when it's never used a single time in the Greek New Testament, the original language of the New Testament. They did it so that the people who are brainwashed by them won't connect Jehovah with Jesus because to them, only the Father is Jehovah. See what they did? Dishonesty? Now, folks, let me give you one final example. And I'll take a final question. If not, I guess we're done. How many? Yeah, 15 minutes. It's a good. We had a good night. Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow, God willing, with sessions. Let me give you a final exa uh, example. Uh, I was I received a praise report, Alan Ruhol, from someone from France, a Christian, and I posted on my Facebook page. He says, glory to Jesus Christ. After the, the two debates I did, the spirit shook him so badly, and all glory to God, I don't take credit for this, that he lost 1 million followers. He had about 2 million. 1 million stopped following him. He then started saying that Jesus did die on the cross and was raised from the dead, and then he shut down his Facebook pages because I really think he got saved. Karim Al-Hanafi, if you guys don't know it, was the leading Muslim apologist in France who was a convert from Christianity. And I had two debates with him online. And the people said it. I'm not lying. So I don't think I'm taking credit for it. He got so shaken and rocked. His world got turned upside down. He never recovered after the debate. And he lost one million followers after those two debates. And he then started saying Jesus did die on the cross and God did raise him from the dead. And then he shut down his Facebook. And someone told me, he goes, did you know he, he's pretty much gone? All glory to God. And you can watch those debates. I speak in English, but it's translated in French. Okay. And here, let me show you the reaction. The reaction of the person who set up the debate. Right. What was his name? I believe say it. I went with my brother in Jesus Christ, Alex Blagojevich, said who's a convert from Islam to Christianity, set it up. After the second debate, we didn't say nothing. We got into the car. Now I'm going to show you the reaction so that I'm not lying. I know you guys know I'm not lying, but still, you know you are. Here, let me show you. So again, this is to show you the arguments we're giving you are battle-tested arguments. We've used it in the battlefield. Let me find French. Hold on, guys. Let me find this guy. Hold on. And I'll, I'll play it for you guys. How do I find the okay, info right here? Okay. See all photos. Okay, sir. Let's see. I hope I find it. I hope we didn't lose it. Okay. Right here. You ready? Okay, ready? Alors, on, euh, on vient de finir le débat. 
Et qu'est-ce qu'on pense à elle Okay, well done. Let's do it again. That's them. Their excitement. Okay, let's try to see it from here. Okay. Alors, on, uh, on vient de finir le débat. Et qu'est-ce qu'on pense à elle They they freaked out. They were blown away what happened to them. This was after the debate. Sorry, you can't see it too clearly. Right? So that's what happened by the grace of God. Now, let me give you one more example from the Jehovah's Witness Bible, how they keep people away from Jesus Christ being Jehovah God. One more example. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. Romans 10, verse 9 and verse 13. Okay, we'll send it to you in a minute before I shut down. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. Not in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Protestant in the King James. Okay, or ASV, it doesn't matter. Guys, pay attention. But please, guys, if you can read, because I don't want to lose you, especially Louisa newbies, pay attention to what Paul says. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay? So notice, I confess verbally, verbally, so people hear it. Jesus is Lord. If you confess he's Lord, believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Now notice. Verse 13, for wh whosoever call shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now let's post them again. Thanks to Mots for bearing with me. Let's post them again because I want to have to ask you guys a question. Okay. That if you, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, verse 13, folks, help me understand. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now, notice in 13 says, call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. In verse 9, notice 13 and 9. Who is the Lord that you call upon, whose name you call on to be saved, according to Romans 10, 9? Paul in Romans 10, 13 says, call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. Who is the Lord whose name you call on to be saved according to Romans 10? Let's see if you guys get it. So post Romans 10, 9, and 13 one more time. Watch here one more time. So they can see it. That if you if thou shalt confess verbally, confess out loud. Right With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. Confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Then 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So who is the Lord that you call on, whose name you call on to be saved? According to Paul, is there any way around it? Who is the Lord whose name you call on in Romans 10, verses 9 to 13 to be saved? Louisa, you got it too? Okay, Jesus, right? But Louisa, Romans 10, 13 is a quotation from the Old Testament. Paul is quoting Joel 2, 32. Romans 10, 13 is a quotation of Joel, the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. Let's look at it to show you what Paul meant when he said, Call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Confess Jesus with your mouth. Okay, this is where he's quoting Joel 2.32. Watch here. Joel 2.32. And then we're done for tonight, folks. We had a good night. I've been on for about three hours now. I don't know what happened. Someone got raptured and left us behind. Joel 2.32. Anybody? Going once, going twice, no sell. First last, pick it up, man. Your boy's dropping it. Joel 2.32. Pay attention where he's quoting from. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. All capitals means that it's a divine name in Hebrew. Call on the name of Yehovah Yahweh shall, <clears throat> shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As Yahweh the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord Yahweh shall call. So notice the quotation that Paul referred to that he cited. Says you are to call on the name of Jehovah. You are to call on the name of Yahovah, Yahweh, to be saved. But then he applied it to Jesus. Paul says, when you confess Jesus is Lord with your mouth, 
then you are calling on the name of Yahweh because Yahweh's name is Jesus. Jesus is Yahweh. He's the name of Yahweh. So you call on Yahweh when you call on the name of Jesus as Lord with your mouth because he is Yahweh. Yahweh is Jesus. The name of Yahweh is now Jesus. Another passage showing that Paul believed Jesus is Yahweh in the flesh, right? And in the Greek of Romans 10, 9 and 13, it's Kyrios, Kyrios, same Greek word. Ah, but let me show you what the Jehovah's Witnesses did. Let me show you what the Jehovah's Witnesses did. Jehovah's Witness Bible, Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. Notice what they did again to deceive people and mislead them from the true identity of Jesus. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. Watch here. This is now the Jehovah's Witness translation. If you, For if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and exercise faith in your heart that God raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of Jehovah will be saved. You see what they did? They did? In 9 it says you confess that Jesus is Lord with your mouth, but then they switched the Greek word for Lord in Romans 10, 13 as Jehovah in order to disconnect Jesus from being that Lord that you call on according to Joel 2.32. So Jesus is Lord, but you... Okay, sorry about that. Let's end it with this. Let me end it with this. Notice what they did. Say, Jesus is Lord, but you call on someone else as Jehovah. So the one you call on is Jehovah, his name, while confessing Jesus is Lord, because they're not the same. You confess... Sorry, guys. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Sorry, it's buffering. One more time. See, Satan is crushed under the feet of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers us. Lord Jesus, rebuke the evil one. Notice at this point it's buffering. Okay, let me end it again. In the Jehovah's Witness Bible, you confess Jesus as Lord with your mouth, but you call on someone else as Jehovah. You call on the name of Jehovah, who's not Jesus. You call Jesus Lord with your mouth, but you call on someone else as Jehovah. You see what they did? You call on the name of Jehovah, who's different from Jesus, whom you confess as Lord. See what they did? You see what they did? Whereas if you translate the Greek con consistently, in Romans 10, 9, it says Jesus is Lord. And Romans 10, 13 says call on the name of the Lord. But they change it to deceive people. Folks, I hope you're blessed. This has been now, what, an hour? of live Q&A. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, look for me around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, between 6 and 7 p.m., God willing. Pray for one another. You guys got to pray more for each other. Start praying more, fast more, singing praises to God more, read the Bible more, because they're going to put you on lockdown. You're going to be locked down for a couple of weeks. Do not panic. Do not freak out. Don't go crazy and shame Jesus. This is where your faith will be tested and where you're going to know if you have faith. Jesus is alive. He's almighty. He lives in us. He loves us. He's in love with us. He'll never forsake us. He'll give us the power. Trust in him. Do not shame him. But use this time to now get closer to him. Come on social media. Find other Christian, Christian brothers, sisters on social media. Pray with each other. Sing with each other. Come to these sessions. Study the word. Cry out to the Lord to help the elderly. Help them if you can. Help one another and keep praying for our support because now we're going to take a hit. David Wood, myself, we're going to take a hit financially. We don't, already don't make much. But now people who panic will cut back on giving to ministry, thinking somehow that's going to help them. Pray the support keeps coming in for us for the glory of Jesus. Because now that people are out of jobs, hey, how are we going to support? But well, we trust in Jesus. Pray that the Lord will use it. my YouTube channel. That it will explode. More people will come. More people will subscribe. More people will like. Study the materials, use them, pass them on. The Father is alive. He's risen. <clears throat> raised his son, I meant to say. He has raised his son who is alive. The Holy Spirit is alive. The Father is life. He is reality. He lives. He's alive. The Son, the Lord Jesus, he has raised his son. He is real. He is reality. He's alive. He lives forever. The Holy Spirit is real. He is life. He's alive. Father is the Holy Spirit. One true God, Yahovah. They live. They live forever. They are almighty over creation. They are a God who are in love with us and will preserve us. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Preserve us and preserve my daughters, please, in Jesus' name.
Christ is risen, risen indeed. Lord willing, see you tomorrow. Love you guys.